continues the Gemara's discussion of a payment of kefel, when you have to pay twice the value of something that you either stole or swore falsely that you didn't have, but you really did have. The Gemara is looking for the source now that that applies even to a bird that you were watching and you claim got stolen from you. The Gemara wants to know, how do you know to include a bird? The Gemara has already said that there's a klal prat klal in the Pasuk describing this halacha. And there are four pratim that are mentioned. It says chamar, se, shor, chamar, se, and salma. So the Gemara wants to know, what does each of these include? The Gemara gives a reason for each of them. And the Gemara says that se is to include even a bird. So now we begin the Gemara's next kasha on that answer. So the Gemara says, perhaps... The word se can only include a kosher bird and not a non-kosher bird. Now, why would you say that? Because the thing that it's including, the rules of klal part klal, should be similar to the prat in two ways. So perhaps it's only something which is similar to the se in the sense that it is metame, in the sense that it can become tame. The halacha is that a se, of course, can become tame if it does without shechita, that is tumas tavela. A bird that is tahar, a kosher bird, can become tame to the extent that if you swallow it, it'll be metame the clothing that are around the neck. That's a special halacha for birds, which we learn at Latim Sachas However, a non kosher bird that becomes nevela does not become tame. There's no din of nevela or tuma. Therefore, it's not really similar to says. So perhaps, again, the Gemara is asking we should only include a kosher bird and not a non kosher bird in this halacha of kefa. So my answer is you're right, but there's a different drasha here. It says kol. It says, a cold var pesha al shar al chamar al sal al salmo. And therefore, the next word kol is an inclusory word, and that includes all other types of things. So, Maras, is that true that the word kol is meant to be an inclusion? It's meant to be a special joshua to include? That's not true. The word kol is usually a klal prat klal. It is the klal, it is the general term in the klal prat klal. That's what it is here. It's not including anything else. So, Maras says, I'll show you that it's a klal prat klal word and not a special inclusion word. And that the Gemara has shown. We've had this so you before. The Gemara says it here. It's from the Pasuk describing what you can exchange your mice or shiny money for and you bring to Yerushalayim. There it says, That is a klal, a general term, anything that you want. Then it says, Cattle, sheep, a uh, wine and a beer, that's a specific term. And then it says, V'chal shartesh alcha, and then it's a general term, anything that you want. So again, you have a klapra klal here, and the more therefore says that's to include, that you'll add exchange your miser money for anything which is similar to the prat in two ways. Those two ways are that it is grown from a fruit, one from the next. That's to exclude salt and mushrooms and other types of uh, fungus uh, foods that are edible which don't grow from a seed, from another adult plant. And it's also to include something which doesn't grow from the ground, and that will be fish. Fish are not included. So the Gemara therefore says, in this discussion, you see clearly that the word kol that is used here is a klal part klal. And how then are we saying that it's a reboy? The Gemara says, no, it doesn't say kol, it says bakol. If you look at what it said there, it said, Uvichol asher teshelcha nafshecha. The bakol, that's a klal prat klal. Kol, which it says by us, a kol varpesha, that's a reboot. Second answer, the Gemara says, maybe really, kol is a klal also. I, how come in our discussion about paying a kefa, we consider it to be a reboot and not a klal prat klal? So the answer is because here it can't be a klal prat klal. Simply because two psukim earlier, we had a different klal prat klal. It said, ki yitein eshes reyeyu. That was a klal, and it's discussing when you give someone something to watch, to set up the case where he claimed he didn't have it. It says, If you give him something, that's a general, give him a thing. Then it says, or kalim, that's a specific, money or items. And then it says, lishmar, and that's again another klal. So now, if you want to say that a kol dvar pesha is another klal, but it's meant for a klal part klal. So why do we make a separate klal part klal here and a separate klal part klal, 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 klal before? Let's just put all the pratim here into the previous klal part klal. Let's just list the pratim and have it all included. Why do you have to do it twice? Obviously, klal here is not a klal for a klal part klal. It's a reboot. Therefore, it can include all types of things. The says, well, once it includes all types of things, why do we need the third dimension for things in the prat? Why does it have to say shor, chamor, se, and salma? So my answer is each one is excluding something specifically. It's excluding 
land, it's excluding avadim, it's excluding contracts, and salma, which is the only one we didn't discuss yet, the other three had said earlier in the last half, salma is excluding something which has no identifying marks. It has to be something which is identifiable to you. Rashi points out the salma, which is addressed, always has identifying marks, as it says in the Gemara, in Eil Matthias, the Afghanistan. Okay, now, the Gemara asks, what's al kol Aveda for? That general term that appears afterwards, what is that meant to do? So Gemara says, that's like Rebbe Abba said, and like Rebbe Abba said, name of Yechanan, someone who says that uh, on an object which he found, and he says that he had it stolen from him, the same halachas of paying a kefel apply to that as well. The Gemara now begins in Osugya, discussing when the payment of kefel applies and when it does not apply. So we begin with a Mishnah. The Mishnah says if somebody, it has two primary cases. First one is if somebody gave a pikadon, he gave an object to someone to watch, to guard, and then he comes to him and he says, where's my pikadon? And he says, it was lost. So that one says, I make you swear. So he says, Amen, meaning that he swears. And then, if witnesses come and testify that he himself stole it and ate it, so he has to pay the value of the object itself. He doesn't pay extra, because kefal only applies when somebody says that the object got stolen. If he says it was lost, it doesn't apply. Now, if, however, the person came and he admitted on his own, without witnesses having to testify that he was lying, then not only does he pay the value of the object, he also pays an additional fifth, and he brings the carbon asham. And that's because of the fact that he swore falsely, and swearing falsely about something that you stole includes asham gzeles, that's carbon asham, and whenever you bring that asham, you have to pay chaymish, and that's only when you admit it on your own. Now, next case is if he says, where is my object, and that person says, it got stolen from me. Ah, so now we're getting into the kefal world. He says, I make you swear, and he says, I mean, so then if witnesses come and testify that he stole it, he has to pay kefal. However, if he admitted it on his own, then there's no kefal, because kefal is a knas. And you don't pay that when you admit on your own. So instead he has to pay an additional fifth, and he has to make carbon asham, just like as he would do when it would be lost, when he would have said that it was lost. So now the Gemara sums up the halachas that we saw here that we're going to try to find a source for. So halacha number one is that we saw that you only pay kefal when somebody claims that it got stolen, not when he claims that it was lost, even though it were referring to a shamer. Uh, Sachar, who's chayev for both of those. Still, you would. It, there's a difference between the two. Kefal only applies to st- when he says it got stolen, not when he says it was lost. Now, the second halacha is that it's only when he swears falsely that it got stolen from him. If it doesn't swear falsely, then kefal doesn't apply. So, the one wants to know what are the sources of these halachas. So, let's begin. So, where it says first, we have a brisa that says on the pasuk im yimatzi haganef. If you find who the thief is, then the Pasuk says you have to pay twice for it. The entire Pasuk reads, If you have to pay twice. So says the Gemara, this is referring to when he was found to be the Ganav. It's not referring to where someone else was found to be the Ganav. So Gemara says, how do you know that? The Gemara says, because that's what the next Pasuk is referring to. It says, and that is referring, that's the next passage that follows, and that's referring clearly, the Gemara will prove later in the Daf, that's referring to the situation where the uh, Shemer himself was found to be the thief, so this one is also talking about that case. Okay, so this is our first source, and the Gemara brings another Brysa, and this Brysa says the opposite. It says, is referring to where he himself is a thief. It's not referring to where he claimed he got stolen by someone else, it's just referring to where he himself was a thief. The Gemara says, how do you know that? And that, the Gemara says, because the same thing. The next passage is talking about where he claimed that it was stolen from him, and he turned out to be the thief. And that passage is talking about that. Our passage must be talking about something different. Not our first passage that says it's talking about the same, but it's talking about something different. What could the different thing that it's talking about be? It must be referring to where he just was found to be the thief straight out. Not where, where someone stole it straight out, not that it was claimed by the Shamer to be the thief. So now the Gemara points out everyone, both of these brushes are agreeing that the next pasuk of him, is referring to where the Shamer swears, where the Shamer was found to be the thief himself. So how do you know that? Because you read it like this, if it was not found to be, 
as he claimed, instead it was found to be Haganif that he himself is the thief. So that's the source for our first halacha, that um, and this applies when he was claiming to be innocent and he was found to be the thief actually when he said someone else had stolen the thing. Next, next the Gemara wants to know how do you know that it's when he swears falsely. The Gemara answers with the Bryce that says, Anikar Balabayas El him. That is, that means that they should approach the judges, they're approaching the judge to swear. And if he swears, he doesn't have to pay. It says, how do you know that? Maybe it's saying that he has to pay. And it's teaching me that Shemachinim does have to pay for claiming that an object that he was watching got stolen. So Gemara says, no, because it talks here about Shlich Yad, and it talks above in a different sugi about Shemar Sakar talks about Shlich Yad. Just like there, it's referring to that he has to swear and therefore, here also, again, this is explicitly Shuas Hashem Tiyam Shneim. So here it's linked to that, and it's also talking about that he's swearing. Now, the Gemara asks, we said earlier that the two Pesukim in a row, one following the other, Ki Yitei Neshoriyeyu and Imla Yimotzei, according to one opinion, one Brisa, they were both talking about where the Shemer claimed someone else stole it. According to a different opinion, one is talking about where he claimed someone else stole it, and one is referring to the person himself who stole it. That they have to swear. Now, the Gemara says, according to that opinion, I understand why there are two psukim that are talking about different situations. But, but according to the one that they're both talking about, where Shamer blamed someone else for stealing it, while well, he was really the one who had it, why do we need two psukim there? So the Gemara answers, so you, you need two to exclude the case of Avad, where he claimed that he lost it. Only this case, and not a, the other case, that's just what's being emphasized. So Gemara says, the other, the other opinion, how does he know to exclude Avad, to exclude where he claimed lost, that there is no kefal there? The Gemara answers because it says Ha-Ganav, could have just said Ganav, the extra hey of Ha-Ganav is to teach me to exclude where he says it was lost. So Gemara says, according to the other opinion, what's the extra hey for? The Gemara answers, that's for the Drasher of Chibar Abba, named Rav Yechanan, who says that even a Shemer who claims that it got stolen from him, and he's found to be the thief, not only does he pay Kefel, but if he shechted it or sold it, he has to pay four and five times the value, depending on what animal it was. The Gemara says, how does the other opinion know that? Allah? The Gemara answers because the two are linked. He's the one who had the two pesukim talking about different subjects. One is referring to the thief. One is referring to the shamer who swore that someone else had stolen it. And those two are linked together. And you learn from one to the other that the halacha of four and five times as much applies there as well. Now, you could have asked a kasha on that. You could have asked a pircha that um, the case of where you you were, where the psukim were speaking directly to the thief, that's even if he didn't swear falsely. But the case where it was a shamer, that's only if he swore falsely. So you can ask a pircha, you can't learn from one to the other because one applies even when he doesn't swear falsely, while the other one is weaker and it's only where he swore falsely. But we're talking about a hekish here, and the halacha is you can't ask a pircha on a hekish. The Gemara asks, according to the opinion that both psukim are talking about a shamer who claims that someone else stole it, how do we know the halacha if the guy stole it himself, if we're speaking to, directly to a thief, not to the shamer, how do we know that he has to pay kefel as well? We, we don't have a pasuk that refers to that case. So Gemara answers, Maybe you'll tell me that it's a couple claimer. The one who claimed it got stolen has to pay a KFL. Certainly, the one who actually stole it has to pay a KFL. So, where it says there's a pericha on that, there's a problem with that couple claimer. That's die, love him, and it didn't ask need In the case of the one who, who claimed it was a stolen from him, is only chayv if he swore falsely. So, the case of the one who actually stole should also only be chayv KFL if he swears falsely. The Gemara answer is that's learned from a different passage that's referring to that specifically. It says, "Im himasi timatze biyadi hakadeva mishar ad chamar ad se chayim shnayim mishalim." So they are clearly referring to the case where he stole it himself. Now the Gemara needs to prove, however, that this applies to all situations and not just those three that are listed and the word chayim. So that's going to be a lengthy drasha of a tanad which we shall see on the next half.